A major reform of EU migration policy is at risk from a European Parliament vote in Brussels. An Israeli airstrike on a central Gaza home killed at least 14 people, including five children and two women. A major reform of EU migration policy is at risk from a European Parliament vote in Brussels. The Pact on Migration and Asylum is composed of five legislative pieces aimed at building more solidarity amongst member states, more controls at borders and more effective and swift asylum procedures. Each proposed law has to be approved by a joint vote. If one falls, the others will likely follow. In theory, the three largest groups of the chamber support it, but there are MEPs among them who feel differently. È veramente troppo poco, è un patto che rispetto alla solidarietà e alla costruzione di un sistema europeo veramente riformato non fa i passi necessari, se la prende con i più deboli e non costruisce la solidarietà di cui c'è bisogno. Quindi diamo un segnale chiaro, vogliamo una direzione diversa e per questo votiamo contro. Minor groups within the chamber are also against the reform. The far right considers it too weak on border controls. The left and Greens warn it weakens the rights of asylum seekers. The rapporteur of one of the proposed laws said the outcome of the vote is uncertain. Bodies were brought to a central Gaza hospital on Tuesday night after an Israeli airstrike on a home killed at least 14 people, including five children and two women. New footage from the Palestinian Red Crescent Society showed teams surveying the destruction at Al Amal Hospital in Khan Yunis after Israeli troops withdrew the previous day. Aid trucks entered Gaza on Tuesday as the UN and several countries demanded Israel to allow even more. France's foreign minister says his country is using all levels of influence, including threats of sanctions, to force Israel's hand. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan said on Tuesday Israel had not informed the U.S. of any specific date for its major offensive into the southern Gaza city of Rafa. Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu told media a date was set on Monday. Families of Israeli hostages protested outside the Prime Minister's office in Jerusalem on Tuesday as truce negotiations in Cairo continue to lag. Four people were wounded as a result of the Russian shelling of Selidov in the Donetsk region, including one elderly man, according to the local hospital. The shelling damaged three high-rise buildings, an administrative building and a shop. The weapon used by Russia to attack the settlement is still being established. EU High Representative Joseph Borrell has urged member states to increase Ukraine's air defence capabilities to help defend against Russia. British Foreign Secretary David Cameron urged Congress on Tuesday to approve new military aid for Ukraine. The best thing we can do this year is to help keep the Ukrainians in this fight. They're fighting so bravely they're not going to lose for want of morale. Uh, the danger is we don't give them the support that they need. Russia's investigative committee said on Tuesday it had opened a probe into financing terrorism that implicates Western countries. A volcano in Iceland, which has erupted multiple times since December, continues to spew out lava. The solar eclipse that amazed North America on Monday was also partially visible. One crater erupted from the volcano and active lava flow was confined close to the volcanic cone, officials said. Iceland's civil defence has lowered the level of alert for the area. Grindavik, a coastal town of 3,800 people, was evacuated in November when the Svartsengi awakened after almost 800 years. Romania has banned gambling venues in towns and villages with less than 15,000 residents. The so-called law of slot machines was passed unanimously by the lower house of parliament. Two opposition parties want what they call the scourge of gambling banned outright. They accuse the government of collusion with the gaming sector for not taking a stronger position. At this moment, we fight with an industry that has a cifra of work done in the market. 
de 10-12 miliarde de euro. Dacă industria nu poate specula nimic din legea noastră, se va face pe repede înainte și cealaltă și vom scoate complet din orașe. There was dissent within the chamber with at least one lawmaker questioning how the threshold had been set. Avem doar un praf în ochi, un simulacru de procedură, o bătaie de joc în care nu ne-au permis să facem amendamente. Ca să înțelegeți absurditatea, au gândit ei că doar la 15.000 de locuitori fac rău păcănelele. Nici măcar n-a fost o dezbatere în comisie să vedem câte localități sunt cu mai puțin de 15.000. Hai să vedem de ce 15, de ce nu 16, de ce nu 2 milioane. Gambling venues have become very popular in Romania with the National Gaming Office registering 12,000. A 2016 study into the number of Romanians addicted to gambling found around 100,000 cases, but that number could be much higher. Universal Hall in Skopje, North Macedonia, has sustained damage following a fire. No casualties were recorded, but the building suffered considerable harm. Emergency services contained the blaze immediately. The landmark building is a symbol of international solidarity, built with funds from 36 countries following a disastrous earthquake in 1963. An inquiry into the fire's cause has been launched, thought to stem from an electrical system not renovated in 50 years. Record-breaking luxury timepieces will be on display to the public this weekend. Watchmakers are showcasing their most luxurious creations in Geneva this week at the Watches and Wonders Fair. This year we are looking for a lot of records and we have seen the, the most complicated watch in the world, the Bachelor Constantin pocket watch with 63 components, 5.5 centimeter thick. And I just would like to present you the thinnest watch on the fair today, which is this watch here. But can people really afford luxury Swiss watches? One CEO says it is about identifying the right watch at the right price point. The price range, which we consider very important in the market right now, is in between 1,000 and 3,000, where the end consumer are looking for a nice, elegant and refined timepieces. And there is the demand, there is a high demand for this uh, price segment. The doors to the fair will be open to the general public for three days. They open this Saturday and close on Monday. Fourteen commitments to ensure transparent and fair European elections. Almost all the political parties in the European Parliament signed a code of conduct for the upcoming continental elections. The Vice President of the European Commission says all the tools are needed to strengthen public confidence in Europe's political institutions, which have been hit in recent months by corruption scandals favoring foreign interests, such as Qatargate and Russiagate. These scandals which you mentioned really uh, uh, created a high level of distrust. Uh, something is rotten in Brussels. I heard it from many places. The people don't differentiate that it was the European Parliament and individual people there. I think that we have to proactively do something against uh, this feeling of people that, uh, well, uh, it makes no sense to go to elect because the system is dirty. The system is not dirty. Those parties who have signed a code of conduct pledge not to produce, use or disseminate misleading content generated, for example, by artificial intelligence. Parties must also refrain from using political advertising sponsored by undeclared interests. In the Commission's view, the pitfalls encountered in previous European elections should be avoided. I think that uh, it's uh, badly needed because uh, in the previous elections we uh, already saw some uh, hidden manipulation which uh, created question marks over the fairness of the elections. We don't have such a luxury to decrease the trust of people in elections. 
the far-right group Identity and Democracy has not signed the text, but says it wants to join the Code of Conduct for the European elections. Russia's second attempt to test launch a new heavy lift rocket from its far eastern space complex was aborted on Wednesday. The rocket previously attempted to launch on Tuesday, which also failed last minute. State news agency RIA Novosti said the cause of the failure was the pressurization of the oxidizer tank. The launch was the fourth for the Angora A5, a heavy lift rocket designed to replace Soviet designed proton rockets. Reinforced security at some European football stadiums following this week's Champion League matches. In Paris, security will be considerably reinforced ahead of PSG Barcelona this Wednesday, the Interior Minister says, after a threat from the Islamic State group to attack the events. Football fans seemed at ease with the level of security in the games played this Tuesday, like in the London's Emirates Stadium, home ground of Arsenal facing Bayern Munich. Well, I think with the world events right now, we're going to expect a lot of this, actually. That's my guess. There was no extra security yesterday in the Santiago Bernabeu Stadium in the Spanish capital, with an extensive police presence already expected ahead of the match. Islamic State has also threatened an attack at the Civitas Metropolitano where Atletico de Madrid receives Borussia Dortmund today.